chaps, we, we've started. Um, just a short video showing a couple of questions in uh, midpoint formula, which are a bit more difficult. Okay? So the formula itself is dead easy, but as you saw, the same with the distance formula. Formula is easy, question can be easy, but then there's the other one, which are right now you find it quite difficult. But I promise you guys, by, by next year, you'll look at it and you'll laugh. It's, it's really is easy. So I'm told, I'll just read the question. This is, by the way, from page 194, um, exercise, uh, exercise 2. And I'm going through C1. Okay. So I'm told if M, which is minus 3, 2, is the midpoint of a line segment joining the point A, which is x1, and B, minus 1, y. Calculate the values of x and y. Okay? Now, initially I think it might look like, ooh, difficult, how do I know it? But actually it is so easy, guys. Okay? The trick is to look at the x coordinate and the y coordinate separately. So let's just forget about the y, let's just look at the first number. Okay? Minus 1, minus 3, and an unknown number. I'm told minus 3 is the middle one. So it's minus 5. It's going to be minus 5, isn't it? Okay? Straight away I can say, oh, x equal minus 5, right? Minus 3 will be between minus 1 and minus 5. Okay? I will show how we can, well, I'll show it now. If you know, if it doesn't come intuitively, you can use the midpoint theorem. You can say, okay, these two points, if I do x plus minus 1, adding both of them, dividing them by 2, I should get the midpoint, right? The midpoint for, uh, uh, formula says that xA plus xB divided by 2 must be equal to xN. Okay? So x plus minus 1 should be equal to minus 3. In other words, x minus 1 equal minus 3. Sorry. Timing it now by 2, so it will be minus 6. x equal minus 5. But this is one of the cases where I think actually intuition, is, it's safer in my opinion. You can make mistakes here or here, I don't think you'll make mistakes. Let's have a look at the y. Okay, 2 is the mid value between 1 and 3. So y must be equal to 3. And again, I'm going to write down using the formula. Okay, ym, middle point, should be ya plus yb divided by 2. Remember, it's class because we average it, okay? So, 2 must be equal to y1, which is 1, plus y divided by 2, counted by 2, 4 equal 1 plus y, y equal 3. All right, guys? You have to understand the That's, that's easy. Really, really it is easy. Okay? I'm going to just pause here, and we're going to do the second bit, which is a bit tricky. Okay, so one more question, uh, which I've asked you to do for homework, so you can obviously listen to this instruction, and then you can solve it, okay? So this is question B in the same page, 194. And we're told that there is a, a rhombus here. Okay? This, is it, did they say a rhombus? Or? Yeah, it is a rhombus. Okay? And the diagonals, they intersect at Q. That's the diagonal. And they want us to find out what the, what the, uh, the coordinate X is. The coordinate X. I know D, I, N. Again, looking initially, like, how am I going to do it? It looks so difficult. Like you were complaining before, oh, do we have shapes in, uh, uh, in elliptical geometry? Yes, we have shapes, but actually it's way easier than you need it. It's just all you need is a bit of common sense. Okay? So, you know, they drew the, the diagonals when they intersect Q. So it's obviously going to be something with them. Now, what do we know about a diagonal in a rhombus or even a parallel? We know that they bisect each other. In other words, this equals to that, and that equals to that. Okay? So they're basically telling us look, Q is the midpoint between B and I, and it's also the midpoint between F and N. Okay? Now, how is that going to help me? I'm just going to explain you the strategy of uh, solving this problem. If I know it's the midpoint between I and Q, then just like Using the midpoint formula, I can find exact, the exact coordinates of Q. You can find the coordinates. And then if I know the midpoint and one of the points, just like in the question we did uh, a few minutes ago, I will be able to know the coordinates of Q. So, let's try.
find it, okay? If Q is a midpoint between 3 and 4 and it's 1 and minus 2, then straight away, without even using the formula, I know that the F coordinate of Q will be between 1 and 3, which means it's Q. And the Y coordinate is halfway between minus 2 and 4, okay? So that's a distance of 6. I'm dividing it by 2, that's 3. So it's going to be minus 2 plus 3, it's 1. And I'll just check that. Is 1 between minus 2 and 4? Yes, it is. It's 3 from either side. If you're not sure how to do it, no problem. You can say ym is equal to xa, which is 4, plus uh, xb, which is minus 2, divided by 2, and I get 1. Okay? Right, so that's half of the problem, or half of the solution. Now, once I know q, I can use q and n to find out f. Okay, just like we did in the first question of this video. Okay? I know that 2 is the mid number between 8 and what? Okay? Well, between 2 and 8, I've got a 6 difference. Okay? So I'm going to have 6 difference to the left. So it's going to, the x will be minus 4. Right? Let's check it. Between minus 4 and 2, there's 6 difference. Between 2 and 8 is 6. Okay? Now let's look at the y. Okay? This is minus 1. This is 1. 1 is between minus 1 and 3. Okay? Let's check it again. From 3 to 1, we go down 2. And from 1 to minus 1, we go down 2. So you see, without actually calculating anything, straight away I get that uh, answer. And this is, a, you, you qualify this as a difficult uh, question if you think of anything. Okay? So a lot of intuition and a lot of common sense, really, when it comes to your analytical geometry. Way better than you do in your head. Have a lovely day. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you next week.